Hello, my amazing first grade friends. This week, we are going to be starting our Dancing Penguin project. Our goals are that we're going to be creating seasonal art because we're starting to get into winter, as you can see from my snow and ice. And we're going to be showing movement in our art, hence why our penguins will be dancing. Today, we're going to start our project by looking at the colors in the background. And I'm going to be teaching you how to draw your iceberg for your penguin to dance on. Next week, we'll finish up with our penguin itself. So let's take a look at what art materials we need today to make our background and our iceberg for our dancing penguins. Now I have both crayons and markers here, but my friends, you can use either or, you don't have to use both. And if you have something like watercolor paints at home that you'd like to use instead to color your background, that's a choice as well. But you do have to have one blue crayon. If you notice, I have that over here with my other art supplies. It is important that it is a blue crayon. Blue marker won't work. Blue paint won't work. It has to be a blue crayon, okay? So I'm going to open up my art folder now, and we'll find out what we need for our penguin. So there's a few pieces of paper, my friends, that are in our folder that we are going to need to use today. But there's also a few we're going to need to save for next week. For example, this orange paper, this white paper, those are both for our penguin's feet and eyes. So I'm going to set those off to the side for a moment. However, this long piece of paper I have here, that's going to be for our iceberg. And the nice big white piece of paper behind it is going to be for our background today. You'll also find that there's a black paper that's going to be for our penguin's body as well as his or her wings too when we're ready. So I'm going to put the small white and the small orange back in. Again, the only two pieces of paper I've taken out were a large white and a long skinny white piece of paper for our iceberg today. You can go ahead and close up your folder. Make sure you have all those other pieces in and set it off to the side for right now. So we need to start on our background. I'm going to go ahead and set my iceberg, that long skinny piece, off to the side. And we need to decide what kind of colors we are going to be using to create seasonal art. Now, back in fall, we looked at the warm colors like red, orange, and yellow when we made our leaves. But if we're talking about colder weather like winter time, would we want warm colors or cold colors? The cold colors, my friends, are colors like green, purple, and blue. And those are the types of colors that we want to use in our background today. In my example as well, I used some pinks and reds because pink can be a warm or a cool color. It's one of those that can kind of go in between to both. You can also use other greens and other blues and other purples that you might have as part of your background. And I'm just going to color stripes in my background. I'm going to do this step kind of fast, my friends, so that way you can see what your background could look like when you're finished coloring it with your cool colors, okay? Here I go. Here's my background now that i finished coloring with the colors that I selected out of my cool colors. Again, cool colors are things like purple, blues, and greens. Now, do you have to use this many different colors? No, but you have to use at least two different cool colors to fill up your whole background, my friends. And this is actually, honestly, the hardest part of our project today is just making sure that when you do fill this whole thing in, you do a good job of coloring it, okay? So now that I have my background filled in, I'm going to switch gears and start working on our icebergs now. As always, though, artists, if you need to pause the video here and finish up coloring your background first, that is a great choice to make, okay? I'm going to push this to the side for just a moment here, and I'm going to look at this piece of paper once my colors are put away. Now, my friends, I did have to give you a longer paper only because this was just a scrap piece of paper. So before we can actually start drawing our iceberg on it, here's what I want you to do. You're going to take your background for a moment and set it on top of your paper. And I'm going to line up just one side of it. Why? Because I want to then take my pencil and draw on this side of my paper to know how wide my background is. Okay? So to save myself a little bit of time, I didn't cut this paper exactly to the side you, size you need. So you might need to crop off a little bit before we start our icebergs, just like what I'm doing right now. I measured it against my background, 
I drew a pencil line where I should cut, and now I've cut this extra little bit off, but don't throw this piece away. You might need this piece later, my friends, for your penguin's eyes or for part of another part of your penguin. So go ahead, tuck that piece into your folder as well. All right, now that my paper is the right size and I'm gonna double check, yep, it's not any longer than my background is now. It's time to learn how to draw an iceberg, my friends. Now, in order for me to show this on my piece of paper, I'm gonna need to draw it with something dark like a blue marker. But you friends are going to draw it with a pencil, okay? So please pick up your pencil even though I'm going to be using my blue marker. And we're going to draw together now. The first thing we need to draw is the very front edge of our iceberg. And an iceberg isn't smooth or straight. It's very jagged. So today, we need to use our zigzag line. Do I want to make my zigzags really, really small and close together? Nope. I want to make them fairly spaced apart. So watch. I'm going to go zig, zag, zig, zag, zig, zag across just the front part of my paper, at the very, very front edge here. I went across, I only did five points down. I wouldn't do more than 10, my friends. And again, if you need to erase, you're using your pencil right now. So please erase if you need to. Now that I have the very front edge though, I need to start working my way up my iceberg. Before we can do some more jagged edging, I need to do some straight lines. Watch how my lines go. I'm gonna go from this point up just a little bit, and I'm gonna do the same thing on all of my up points, just drawing about the same size line. So see how I did it first on all the up points of my zigzag? I also wanna do that same thing on the down points too, but they won't be as tall. Look, my lines will only come to about here. So on those down points, you'll make the same straight line that goes up. That's about the same size as well, my friends. And now we're gonna connect those straight lines. Here's what I mean by that. I'm gonna start at one end, and I'm gonna start from one line and go down to the next, and back up to the next, and then down and up and down and up, just like our zigzag line does. It goes down and up and down and up. So it's just another zigzag line that's helping connect the very front edge of my iceberg. Now we have kind of the area where the penguin is going to be dancing, but we also need to show a backside of our iceberg too. So I'm going to do two long straight lines now. Watch one at the very front where I started before, one long line, and one at the very end of my zigzag. And again, we want to make the back edge jagged too. So I'm going to connect those two straight lines with another zigzag. Maybe I'll go down first and then up. And again, I don't want to make my zigzag super tiny because that will be hard to cut out in a minute here. I want to space them out pretty nicely, make them kind of big, and make sure I line it up with that last line just like that, my friends. So here is my iceberg drawn out, but we need to also add a little bit of color to it. And that's where our crayon comes into place. So you see how my iceberg right now is blue because I used my marker. That's what you're gonna do first, my friends. You're gonna pick up that crayon and you're gonna trace all of those pencil lines that you just drew, your zigzags, your straight lines. You're gonna go right over top with your blue crayon, okay? So even I'm going right on top of those lines right now, even though my lines are already blue, just to show you that I'm doing it too. Again, your lines should be pencil. Now we're gonna turn them blue. Along the front edge as well, I'm gonna add just a few more straight lines inside my zigzag. And I'm pushing hard with my crayon right now, my friends, to show this front edge and how it's different from the top part of my iceberg. So add some straight lines with your crayon inside of those two zigzags that we made at the front. And then there's only one more thing we're gonna do with this blue crayon today. And that is color on the top part of our iceberg. But do I wanna push hard this time? Nope. This time, I want my crayon to color very, very lightly. 
it almost looks like it's kind of scratching into the ice this way. So very, very gently, using your blue crayon one last time, go ahead and scratch some blue icy color into your iceberg. And you can go all the way to the front edge if you want. Add some color all over. You notice I'm getting outside of my lines a little bit because I'm going to be cutting my iceberg out. So do I need to worry today about staying inside of these lines? Nope. All right, when I'm happy with how scratchy my iceberg looks, and I'll hold it up so you friends can see it a little bit better, I'll put my blue crayon away, and now it's time to cut out our iceberg, my friends. Now, do I want to cut on any of my middle lines? Nope. I only want to cut on any outside lines and get rid of this extra white part that I have around the outside of my iceberg. So I'm going to speed this part up now and I'm going to cut out my iceberg so you can see how it should look when you're all done cutting, okay? Here's my iceberg now all cut out. As you notice around the outside there's no more white and it is in one piece. Now if you do accidentally cut off maybe the front part. Is that a big problem or a small problem, my friends? A small problem, right? Because we can glue it right back down because that is our last step today. Last thing I need to do is just line up my iceberg where I want at the bottom of my paper and glue it down. Now, personally, maybe I might actually want this side to be the top. So could I turn my paper this way around and glue it here? Yep. But could I glue it this way? Maybe not, because then my penguin won't have enough room to dance. So make sure, my friends, that your paper is the long way up and down before you decide where to glue it. When you know where you want it to be, flip it over, and you can use glue stick or glue bottle to glue it down. Again, I'm going to do this real quick, okay? Here is my background and iceberg finished up today. And again, these are the only parts that we are going to work on this week, both in the video and the live lesson. Next week, I will teach you how to make your penguin and we'll show movement by making your penguin dance, right? Now in Seesaw, you do not have a question to answer this week, my friends. And because our artwork is not finished yet, you don't have to take a photo of it if you do not want to. You can just turn your Seesaw template in blank. Or, if you would like to, you can send a picture of your artwork if you want, okay? So, please let this dry before you put it back in your folder. And I will say goodbye now, my friends. And, as always, have fun creating.